What's up guys? Thanks for joining me today. As you can see by the logo, I'm in Squire Boone Caverns today. Going to be checking that out. I'm in, I guess it's Cordon, Indiana. Outside of Cordon. I'm um, just up the highway a little ways. Come off and literally I'm out in the middle of nowhere. But I'm not totally alone today. Today I'm going to be joined by a special friend Today, uh, she came all the way, <laughs> she came all the way from the Netherlands to be here, well, not to be here on this video, but she came all the way from the Netherlands here in, to come here in the U.S. She's here for a few days uh, to some concerts, and she came by to visit. I said, hey, let's do a video. So, what, what, tell your name. I am Alika Geersen, and I'm yeah. from the Netherlands. Don't try to pronounce my last name. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not going to try to pronounce it. I think I've been saying it wrong all these years, so. <laughs> so well, we, it used to be Van Dyke. That was easier. Yeah, yeah, that is true. You know, and I, when I first heard your name, I thought, I wonder if she's related to the comedian Dick Van Dyke. <laughs> and I thought, no, I doubt that. So, no. So, she, she's here with me today, and we're going to go down underground. We're going to check out the cave. You can actually see part of the cave. Going up along through here, that's the cave up through here, and see all up and through there. They also got a zip line up there too. I think that's pretty cool. So we're going to be taking a look at Squire Boom Caverns today, and you'll find out why it's called Squire Boom Caverns uh, after a while. So let's get started. Before I go in, check out this little guy. Check out him. Hi, buddy. Do you know Babe? You know that pig, Babe? Are you friends with him? Do you know him? No. There's some goats around here too. I think they're, I think they're inside. I think they're hiding out in this little, little shed over here. You guys in there? Huh? I think they are. Check us out. There you guys are. Can you say hi? Can you say welcome to Brando's Adventure? Wait, hey, don't eat my shoe. You trying to eat my shoe? Of course, pigs do eat just about anything you throw at them. Don't eat my shoe. All right, buddy. You want to say hi? You're just gonna look at yourself, huh? He's just gonna look at himself. He don't care. So, come here, buddy. You gotta say hi. Come here. Come here. Usually goats are, I've been ran by a goat, that's not fun, they hurt. As we prepare to go inside the cave, I want to apologize ahead of time for any weird camera angles or dark camera shots. It's really hard to film inside these caves. Some really cool we formations. We have approximately 20 different formations we can talk about in the cave. We have hundreds of them, or thousands actually, but 20 different. And I will speak about a lot of them, and uh, I will tell you this right now, that they're all made the same way. They're dripping, or flowing, water depositing mineral. Those deposits are formations. Right here in front of us, we have what we call rimstone dams. They hold the water back. Little dams, and you can see there's no uniformity to them. They grow at different uh, well, just thicknesses and shapes. But uh, as the water flowed down over here a few years ago, several years ago, I guess, uh, it left these deposits, which are called rimstone dams. Very dry section of our cave. The next section, the next stop will be dry. But you can hear some water back there, and that's where we're going to mine. Mm -hmm. Very dry section. But these are rimstone dams. Uh, I'll show you a rimstone later on. It's the largest one you're going to see in this country. Second largest in the world. Wow. But uh, wow. right now, these are, these are very dry and dead. Same formations of limestone dams. Step out here or on this platform if you want to. Whoa. Looking into another very dry room, but 
This is awesome. How much the formation he do you have a cave in over there? Well, back? Yeah, it's been several years. But yeah, that room is very un unstable for, for tours. Uh huh. Drop a few falls. It's been uh, 2004 is the last known fall. Long uh -huh. fall so it's been a while. Yeah. And they never had tours through that area? They did. Oh, one they did? Time, yeah. One they time. Did. In 2004, we had to shut that room down. Yeah. And this section where you were going into right now was on the way to get Memorial Day last week, last year. Oh, wow. So it, it was always here, but the tour used to go over there and go down a passage right over there. Huh. And we're connected to that passage later on. Right now, this, this is as far as we go. And we'll, we'll, uh, That's incredible. Yeah, this is the section we opened up Memorial Day weekend. Not to see in here. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and this is where I start talking more about formations and how they're made. I'll get into detail later how they're made. The names you've probably heard before is the Black Knights. I can see them. Those are the light lights, like these here in front of us, are pointed and they raise towards the ceiling. They might reach the ceiling with those light mites. Titan mites, kind of the word game we use to remember. <laughs> now they grow. You see dripping water on the formations. That's what makes them grow, as I said, detail a little later. But they eventually grow together. It's the light mites, the light mites, mm -hmm. and become a column. You see a lot of columns. And then we have soda straws in the can. Tubular. Tubular slot pumps is a proper name. You see a bunch of those up on the left edge there and up on the ceiling. Then hollow pieces of rock, just like a straw in the bottom. It's very brittle as you can imagine. See if you know the back one is hard. It's one of the formations. And as we walk through the cave, we'll be like some formation building. Water in regards to a mill wheel is surface free, goes into a sinkhole over two miles away. Huh. It's going to two miles before we see it here on the ground, and then we'll follow the ways and it does go out to our mill wheel. About how far underground do we go here? About 85 feet is about the deepest part of the cave. Okay. We've been 20 feet of surface here in the bottom. It's not really a beach cave, it's a
going to see five waterfalls in the cave, and each one gets taller than the last one. The first one's right around the corner here. Deep is this go down this water? It's not a foot down. It's going to have to be about three to four feet down behind the sea. That's a good goal. It's going to be heavy rain. You get the ship left. The water gets up a lot. Yeah. It's up a little bit of a lot of time. It's a good one. It really gets loud when you get that down. Yeah, I'll bet. It's, it's loud now. I can imagine even hot, the higher water. Wow. crooked. So like that column back there. This one's getting a hook on. This one drew down from the right and then to the left horizontal and back up again on the left. Not touching yet on the left. <laughs> Several of them have hooks on them. Different looks to them. Science once again can't explain how they grow like that. Science oh, common sense dictates that they should be pretty well go straight up and down. Like mm -hmm. Gravity would do it. But an electite will grow at odd angles. They are strange. Marine goes north of us. They have some electrons also. You see a layer of black mineral here. You can see it all over on this wall. It's manganese. As I said, this is limestone cave. Most of everything is limestone. But other minerals such as manganese are a few other minerals. Biggest cave as some caves are, but size really doesn't make a difference if you got a lot to see. This is a place where I will stop and talk in detail about how they're made. Maybe you've heard this before. If you have, just say, hey, move on. I'm going to move on. <laughs> but these formations, as I said, are made by dripping or flowing water deposited in the mineral. Where does the mineral come from? Uh, it's 
rain comes down through the soil, it mixes with a gas called carbon dioxide. The water and carbon dioxide mix, it changes the water into an acid. We know that acids dissolve, mm -hmm. and that's what we're looking at, dissolve limestone rock because of that acid and water. Now the acid water is, is called carbonic acid, it's a weak acid, it's the same acid we have in our salt, salt drinks. Mm -hmm. But it does dissolve the rock, it seeps down the cracks in the limestone very slowly, and this is the result of dissolved rock. All the minerals, we see all the formations we see, and almost all of them are made of the limestone. The dissolved limestone is called calcite. Mm -hmm. It's actually the mineral name. And uh, that's, that's what we have, is how they grow and what they're made of. Uh, the proper name, maybe you've heard this before, is speleothem. It's a Greek word that means cave deposit. Mm -hmm. So they are all speleothems. We call them columns for description. About how long would it take for a column like that out there to to form? Well, I can answer that. Oh, really? Uh, and, and you'll get answers. Uh -huh. Don't get me wrong. Cave guides will answer that if they're wrong. Yeah. Uh, in my opinion, because we're trained, we're trained to tell you that it takes a hundred years for a cubic inch of this calcite to form on the average. A cubic inch is not much. Mm -hmm. 100 years per cubic inch average. If your eyes tell you there's something wrong with that, you've got to believe your eyes. Just <laughs> because not all science is accurate. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look over here, you'll see some very active formations. A whole lot of water fall, flow. Mm -hmm. Now, common sense tells you that if they've got the same amount of mineral in it that these over here do, they're going to grow faster because you'll see some drops of water on these. Yeah but nothing like over here, a very slow process over here. It may take another five hours or 10 hours or a day to get enough for just one drop. Mm -hmm. So you can, you can understand there's gonna be a vast yeah. difference in how they grow. Yeah. But anyhow, all, all guides and all caves are told to tell you about that 100 years per cubic inch. As we go up the spiral staircase to get out of this cave, mm -hmm. we're going up a shaft that we blasted out the dynamite. Hmm. We did that in 1970. So that's, 19, that's 48 years ago. Mm -hmm. If you look on those walls, you'll see big sheets of calcite formed on those walls of less than 48 years. Wow. So the 100 years per cubic inch average, and then you see what 48 years, all this, like about, yeah. eight, about eight foot tall or so. Uh, to me, that's not a good sign. Yeah. So further answer your question, I'll let you make up your own mind as you look going up the stairs. But also, uh, just the, the, the divergence of dripping water. Yeah. Common sense, they're going to grow real slow or actually pretty fast. Hey, that's a, it makes good sense what you, I think what you say. Logic there, uh, yeah. Because these walls were bare 48 years ago and now they've got that formation on it. So mm -hmm. that's all I can go by. Yeah. I never thought of it that way. It, well, it makes makes perfect as sense. You say, all, Guide you every tour you ever go through, that's probably what they're going to tell you 100 years per cubic inch. I don't yeah. know, I don't think it's accurate. As I say, I'll let you make up your own mind when you see that, but I don't think it's good logic. Mm -hmm. It's more rim stones. No, no different than our big one back there, except size. Mm -hmm. uh, this is flow stone here. It flows down off of an incline, called flow stone. Actually, you see more flow stone in this day than anything. It's all over the place. I can stop just about any place and name every formation that we've already named. <laughs> it's just uh, like I say, a little bit every place. Well, I can get there. They don't have light on us, but uh, uh, just a strange, strange looking point. Passage comes out under here, goes under our feet here to my left, under this wall. Once again, we have some lights on it. Now, is this also part of what fell too? Well, that's actually what I was getting ready to say. <laughs> I'm going to stop here and point out that this is called breakdown. Hmm. If you think about what breakdown is, it's common. I mean, it's just following mm -hmm. the 
the words. It does break down, it does fall, gravity works. Every cave you've ever in, you've seen break. Hmm. Makes people like I said, a little nervous talk about it, but yeah, it does happen. Yeah. And these, like I said, have got a column on it, they've all got formational growth on them, they've been here a while. Yeah. But uh, it does happen. Huh. Add some reddish color into that column and that flow still there. That redness is, uh, and you can see some more down here and back there, is from an iron ore that's been dissolved. Mostly mm -hmm. calcite and mostly uh, limestone, but occasionally other minerals will be dissolved. They will color the formation where the color of the rock is. Up here you'll see another passage. Now, I've showed you a couple that you can walk through. Well, you couldn't walk through that one, but you can crawl through. Mm -hmm. And when you explore a wild cave, and there's a lot of them in this area, uh, you go through all these passages to see where they go. Sometimes they won't go, and you have to back out. But nonetheless, you'll see a lot of those crawling passages in the cave. What would you call this formation here if you don't name it? Mm -hmm. What would you call it, Lita? I really don't know. We call it fried egg. Fried egg, eh? Oh, yeah, 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 sure. <laughs> okay, I see it now. It is a uh, stalagmite, but it's not pointed like most of them are. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's got a knot on top of it. It looks like a fried egg. It's just where it grows. So that's what we call it. <laughs> We're not too technical around here. <laughs> I mean that over there, and they look down, and you can look down 20, 30 feet there. And Looks like it anyway. Yeah, it sure does. It's only about an inch of water. <laughs> That's cool. If you notice, I turn lights on when I come to an area and I turn them off when we leave here. A couple of three reasons for that. But the biggest one is heat. These lights put off a lot of heat. Mm -hmm. Now what's that do? That creates mildew growth. Because this cave is very humid. Well over 90% humidity. Mm -hmm. Humidity makes mildew. Mm -hmm. The cave stays right at 54 degrees. If we leave it alone, it's good at 54 degrees. But coming in and out a lot, if we leave the lights on, next thing you know the temperature starts to rise. You can dry it out. So, we do turn the lights off for that big reason, plus money saving, plus that's where the cave is naturally. Yeah. We have a big room here behind us, in front of us now. We're going to stop down there and talk a little bit about what we see. We see some other passages, those crawling passages I talked about. Also, when you have a steps, you get a big vantage point from up here, you can see a lot. So Take your time, walk down the steps, use your hand holes, but you look around. And we'll talk about something that doesn't down there. Yeah. Yeah. They don't do it justice. This is absolutely gorgeous down here. You just have to come out here and look at those. <laughs> it's 33 and a half feet to the top. Very large formation, and also, if you remember, I said that a dry formation is a dead formation up there when we came in the cave. Mm -hmm. uh, they are. If they're dry, they're dead. You can see a good flow of water down and off of ages. This is still being formed, 33 and a half feet. Wow. So, quite a lot of rock in there.
He explored this area with his brother Squire in 1790. That's where this cave is found. Uh, today, if you go down, I know you're going out that way, so you can't see the entrance to the cave down in the mill. They found the cave in 1790. Uh, Squire is not very well known, Daniel is, but as you read the stories of Daniel Boone, you'll see that he mentioned Squire with him a lot on his explorations. 1790, now 1800, Squire came back through here by himself, exploring again. As he came through this time, he was by himself, and if you think about 1800, our country was very young, it was frontier, Indian territory, and Squire had a run with the Indians, they began to chase him. He was able to get away from them by getting down the hole in the ground, that hole in the ground was a cave, saved his life. He went all about his exploration and he came back in four years, 1804. Came back here to live. Indians had moved out, settlers had moved in, and he came back to build a grist mill because besides exploring, he was a businessman. He did make a living for his family at the time. It's really not damn it. But nonetheless, Squire did. He was a worker of the Boone family. It takes a lot of effort back in those days to build a grist mill. You don't go to the hardware store and buy your lumber and all that. <laughs> mm -hmm. You have to it out in <clears throat> hand. But nonetheless, he built three of those in his life. Two down in Shelbyville, Kentucky. One down here. He was also trained at very much, at very, he was very literate, which is unusual for the frontier. They were usually illiterate folks. But uh, he was very literate. He didn't write very well. He was trained as a gunsmith, built and repaired guns, a uh, blacksmith, a uh, carpenter, a cabinet maker, a uh, farmer, full time denominational preacher, part time politician, surveyor, stone carver, take a hammer and chisel and carve figures in the stone. He didn't sit around like we do today. Mm -hmm. He was a very active man. But nonetheless, he did die, as you can see, in 1815. And before he died, he asked his family to bury him in the cave to save his life. He had a special affinity for that. So they buried him up there in the burial cave. You can walk up there after the church if you care to. It's up on the side of the hill. Buried him up there, and he stayed there until 1975, 160 years. At that time, they brought his remains down here and had a funeral for him and reburied him. Mm -hmm. He is buried here at this time. Well, short story on why we call it Squire Boone Caverns, but the most interesting part to me was Daniel Boone's involved. Mm -hmm. He's famous in Squire Boone. Uh, I'll quit talking. I, I can go more, but that's mm -hmm. funny. It gives you kind of an idea of what's going on or what went on down here mm -hmm. when this was the front tier. As we make our way to the surface and prepare to end the video, I would like to thank you all for watching Brando's Adventure, and I'd like to thank Squire Boom Caverns for giving us this private tour. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you all next time. Thanks for watching.